Hey everyone, Rascal here. Welcome to another Rascal Reviews. And there's no way I could have a set of February themed reviews and not talk about now one of my favorite, all time favorite animes slash rom coms, Monthly Girls Nozaki Kun. Now, you probably seen this come up on my channel every now and then, but I really don't give a whole lot of emphasis towards it as much as I really want to. That's because not a lot of people know about this anime or the manga. It's 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 weird. It has it's famous, but it's also not. I don't know how it's managed to do both, but it does. Okay, so a quick rundown. This anime is a rom com slash parody of shoujo manga and tropes. And here a girl named Chiyo Sakura wants to confess uh, that she likes her classmate Nozaki. And when she goes to him, she ends up saying that she's his fan. And he thinks she wants an autograph, so he signs gives he signs one for her. And she actually ends up discovering that he's actually a famous uh, shoujo man mangaka. And you know what a mangaka is, so. <laughs> and from there, that's where the comedy starts rolling, like from the very first episode or the first chapter, if you happen to read it. And it is just. I don't know. I almost don't know how to describe it. It's probably one of the most hilarious things I have seen ever. And my only regret is that this show was only 12 episodes long. I'm not kidding. It's only 12. Now, the manga is still going. It's on its 14th volume, and there's a live-action adaptation that completely craps on it, but it's still going. It's still popular. It's still getting views. It's still one of the highest-rated mangas out there, but yet no one really talks about it as much. And the the anime only got 12 episodes, and the way it ends... I wasn't sure that was intended on purpose, so they didn't have to make any more, or they weren't sure I was going to be, and they just stopped there just in case. But I really think it should have, like, way more seasons than just one. I really hope that one day it does come back as a show. So, as I said, the anime parodies, romance movies, rom-coms, shoujo manga, and shoujo anime. Like, whatever you expect to happen in these types of films and shows the reverse happens. And the main draw of the story is that everyone is sort of the opposite of a trope. Like, instead of usually shoujos and romance movies are written by women, it's written by a guy instead. That's Nozaki. Instead of having uh, a dashing uh, a dashing guy that flirts with all the girls, which they do actually have in here, they actually have a girl doing it, but she still likes guys and she likes performing like this, like she's in a play. Um, instead of having the really attractive yet shy girl, it's a it's a guy, and that's Mikoshiba. And it's 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 absolutely hilarious. It's like there's so many tropes that they kind of make fun of, but they still stand out as their own characters. And the 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 uh, layout is that it usually ends in a joke. Like you think it's gonna go one way. And it goes the complete opposite because everything in here is flipped on its head and it never goes how you think it will. Plus, it's also been praised because there are no standard mean girls or mean guys. There's no bullies, no bad boys, though Makoshiba Mikos thinks he's one. There's no uh, rich girl trying to take the guy. There's no... Um, commoner and wealthy person type dynamic, no love triangles, none of that. None of that's in here. And for some, they're a little disappointed because they were expecting how they would tackle it, but for this story, they kind of just back away from all of that. Everyone's pretty nice when they want to be, and sometimes they, or they're kind of mean and they really don't know, like with Sale. So, I'll give like a really quick rundown of the characters. I already explained Ozaki. Uh, who's the mangaka, but no one believes him. He's actually told people he's one, but no one believes him, and he just kind of gave up. Uh, Chio ends up working with him, so he, she actually ends up learning more about him, getting closer, because she really didn't know that much about him in the beginning, so there's actually more time for her to know him and get to know him as a friend so she can get closer. You have Makoshiba, who's supposed to be the bad boy and the flirtatious one, but then... After a while, when he says some really stupid lines, he gets embarrassed, and then he can't handle flirting with the girls anymore, and ends up being the flip on the troll. Uh, you have w Wakamatsu, who is the, 
I, I guess he's supposed to be the nice guy. Then the live action version has changed him to being a jock. So I don't know what's going on with that. But he's like the standard nice guy, but he's also not bright. So a lot of times he things go over his head and he misses the point entirely. There's a sale who's supposed to be instead of the jock guy, she's a jock girl who kind of picks on people, but she doesn't realize she's picking on people. She thinks she's just being very honest, and the honesty's supposed to help them when she's really just pissing off everybody she talks to. And then you have the two main, to the two real main characters and the best part of the anime. You have Kashima, who's a girl that, that's known as the prince. And the way that she designs, she kind of looks like a boy. And she can easily act and flirt with the girls with no problem, while Makochiba can't handle more than a few minutes of it. So they end up going to her for the attention. And so that's how you know, like, ahead of time what that's about. And then you have uh, Hori, who's basically almost everyone's favorite character at this point. If you look online, he's just about every person or girl's favorite who is in charge, oh, I'm sorry, the president of the drama club. And yes, if you can tell by the picture, he is a little shorter than Kashima, but they never really draw attention to that unless they're bringing up about the acting. Like, he couldn't get roles as leads anymore because he, was, he wasn't he was as tall as requirements, so he found a different way to uh, be in the plays and doing the things he loves, which I think is actually a pretty great idea. And they didn't really have the trope like with like Edward Ellick from Full Metal Alchemist where the person hates when someone talks about their height and they they flip and they start beating people up because you call them short or tiny and stuff. I can say no one makes fun of the, his height in here. And he never gets insecure about the height. And Mama has said that's probably why I like a lot of fe female readers like him. So that would that would make sense. And all of the ship dynamics in here are absolutely hilarious. And the pairings you already know if you've seen is Chiyo Nozaki, Seon Wakamatsu, Kashima and Hori. And the Kashima and Hori are pretty much the favorites of the fandom. And even when you look at the poll, they're the they're you would think they were the main characters, which is absolutely hilarious to me. Mikoshiba, there are rumors he might end up with um, Nozaki's brother Mayu. He's not in the anime, but he's in the manga. And the way Mikoshiba acts and the way Mayu acts, it's possible it's gonna happen. So it might be their only uh, LGBT ship. I don't know if they're gonna go forward with that. They might because at at the time it was made, laws weren't passed. So they might end up together now because more and more things have been passed both in America and Japan. So if you're a shipper of them, then that actually ends up being the fourth ship in here instead of three. So, yeah. I mean, I could go on about the show for a long time and I can't because it's just too much, just too much to talk about. But that's the baseline of the entire anime. It's only 12 episodes. Um, it was on Netflix, and Netflix removed it after the announcement of a live-action adaptation. Not from them, but from China. And it was also removed after Crunchyroll. So, unfortunately, you can't go there to see it. You can see it on YouTube, though. I have saved a playlist if you want to uh, go there and watch it on there. Or I think it's available on High Dive as well if you have that service. But I think you should stick with YouTube. It's probably the best bet to watch it in high quality. Animation is like incredible like it's not like a huge shonen action show or anything but it's really colorful and vibrant it's fun it's hilarious you'll be laughing because there are times i was kind of like out of breath laughing at just one episode or just one scene you would really enjoy this if you like uh, romantic comedies or turning tropes on their heads and and spoofing uh, romantic movies you would absolutely love this anime uh, so far, only a couple, a few people I know watch the show. Uh, Sylvia watches it, which I'm so grateful for because now I can talk to her about it. Mama Entertainment, of course, because we've covered this show in more detail on our podcast for Paul. So I definitely recommend that one if you want a much longer video. Um, Nick, the Misfit actor, has seen it, and I'm really surprised, but I'm really glad he loves it and enjoys it. He's even done some fan dubs of Hori, which are pretty spot on, and I enjoy. And I, I think that's it. If there's anybody else who watches this anime, let me know in the comments, because that's about all I know. 
Uh, I would love for more people to watch it because they're really missing out on something really great. And I'm hoping that the show gets enough attention where there's a like a resurgence thanks to the live action show coming up and people watching on YouTube that um, they'll bring it back for another season or several seasons or even a movie. I would really love that because this show is just hilarious and it's awesome and you must see it. It's definitely perfect to watch in February along with uh, if you have a list of rom-com movies or animes like Toradora, Love is War, or on High School Host Club, or live-action rom-coms that have come out in the U.S., just mix it all in, and trust me, you will love it. You will not regret seeing this show. It is hilarious. And if you have seen this show, let me know anything in the comments below, or you're going to go try it out. Do you love it too? Do you just like it? Or are you just not a fan of it? Which I would be su pretty surprised to hear, honestly. And thank you so much for watching my videos. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to me. And I'll see you guys next time in the next Rascal Reviews. Later!